My name is Sandra Flores, and I will be doing your head-to-toe assessment. Okay. Um, can you tell me what your name is? My name is Victoria. Hi, Victoria. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to uh, get in a gown. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands. Once you're um, in a gown, we're going to go ahead and start your assessment. Okay. Um, prior to coming into the examining room, uh, we went ahead and checked your vital signs. We checked your uh, height and weight, and we uh, checked your visual acuity, okay? And I'm happy to tell you have 20-20 vision. Um, so now that you're in a gown, okay, I'm going to go ahead and start my assessment. Is that okay with you? Yes. Okay. I'm going to start by um, inspecting your head. Okay, I'm looking for a symmetry. Um, make sure your head is all equal. Okay, we don't have any abnormalities. Okay, we look in the front and the back of your head. We look for any lesions, any trauma, okay? Now my hands are nice and warm. I'm going to go ahead and palpate your head, okay? So I'm going to start at the top. And it's really movable, okay? I don't feel any masses or any tenderness, okay? Do you feel any tenderness? Okay. All right, so that looks good. Your hair is evenly distributed, okay? We don't see any alopecia. It looks like everything's even, okay? All right, so now I'm going to look at your face, okay? We are looking for color. We're looking for rashes. We're looking for um, any masses, any tenderness, okay? So I see you have a little bit of acne lesion, okay? And now I'm going to go ahead and palpate your forehead, and we're checking your frontal sinuses. Any tenderness there? No. Okay. Your maxillary? Any tenderness? No. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, check your temporal mandibular joint. Okay. Can you open and close your mouth for me? Okay. Move your jaw side to side. Good. I don't feel any clicks. Okay. And obviously she had no tenderness. Okay. Now I'm looking at your um, eyes. Okay. We're also looking for symmetry. Make sure your eyes look equal. Okay. And at your color of your eyes. Okay, at the sclera of your eye that is nice and uh, white, no uh, jaundice, no yellowing, discoloration noted. I'm going to look under your eye, your conjunctiva, which is nice and pink. We have no redness, we have no drainage, okay? Um, now we're going to go ahead and look at your eyes. Okay, I'm going to check for your pupillary response, okay? If you can go ahead and look straight ahead, and I'm looking at direct pupillary response and consensual, okay? Just look straight ahead, okay, and consensual. Straight ahead, direct, and consensual. Very good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and have you follow my finger, okay? Just follow my finger. Good. Okay, we just checked your uh, cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6, okay? Um, now, I'm going to have you close your, close your eyes. All right, and tell me where you feel this, okay? Forehead. Step check. Good. We just checked your cranial nerve five. Okay. Can you go ahead and frown for me? Close your eyes. Um, wrinkle your chin. I mean your forehead. Puff your face. Good. We just checked your cranial nerve seven. Okay. And everything looks intact. All right. Um, I'm gonna be looking at your. With the ophthalmoscope, we're going to be looking for your red reflex in your eye. So if you can look straight ahead, and we will check the right eye with the right eye. Once you locate the red reflex, you go ahead and move in and look at the inside of the eye. Okay. And we make sure that there's no hemorrhages and everything looks fine. Left eye, I'm going to go ahead and support her head with my left with my right hand, 
and check her eye. Look for the red reflex with my left eye as well. Once located, you move in. And look at the back of her eye. Make sure that it, you can see the vessels and that there's no hemorrhage and everything looks fine. You wanna blink your eyes a little bit? Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on over to your ears, okay? And we're gonna look at the auricle, your pina, and make sure that it's nice and soft, that we don't feel any masses, that they're symmetrical, okay? We're looking at the outside, I don't see any drainage, all right? And I'm gonna be checking the inside of your eye, your ear, I'm sorry. For an adult, we would uh, check up and back, okay? And you go ahead and support. And you look for the tympanic membrane that's nice and white and pearly, no redness or any drainage. That looks fine. We would do the same for the other ear. Okay, tympanic membrane. Okay, nice and white and pearly, okay? For the pediatric patient, um, you would pull down and back. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna check your mouth, okay? Can you open your mouth for me? Say, ah. Okay, I'm looking at the tonsils, I'm looking at the back of the throat, the uvula, I don't see any masses. I'm looking at the soft palate, hard palate, same, uh, no masses, no um, uh, swelling at her mucous membranes, her teeth, we look for any cracks, no cavities, can you lift up your tongue? And we're looking at her um, ducts. Okay, same thing, no swelling. Can you stick your tongue out for me? Move it side to side. Good. What is your name? Victoria. And can you swallow for me, Victoria? Okay, we've now assessed your cranial nerves 9 and 10 and 12. Okay, everything looks fine. Um, now we proceed to palpating, I mean, to inspecting her neck, to checking her neck. We go ahead and um, check for uh, symmetry for any masses, any swelling, I don't see any. Um, we check, now we palpate, and we start by palpating the pre-auricular lymph nodes, post-auricular, submandibular, submantle, and her tonsillar. Okay, everything looks fine. Then you go down to the anterior cervical, okay, posterior cervical, and her occipital. Any pain? Yeah. Okay. Then you check to make sure that her trachea is not deviated. You place your thumbs on each side, push a little bit back, and there's no tracheal deviation. I don't see any jugular distension. Okay, can you move your neck from side to side? And rotate it, okay. Good. Can you shrug your shoulders for me? Okay. And we've now checked cranial nerve 11. Now we are gonna go ahead and move down to the chest. And what we do is we inspect the chest. We look at the um, rhythm of her respirations, the rate, um, Everything looks symmetrical. Uh, we go ahead and palpate for any masses around the chest, nothing. Okay, we do our firmatus. Can you see 99? 99. 99. Okay, and what we have is uh, resonance um, would be our normal finding. Okay, and the hyperresonance would be an indication of like emphysema. Um, then we start listening for breast sounds. And we start from by on one side and you compare to the other side and move laterally. 
Can you take a deep breath? Again. Okay. Okay. Again. And again. Okay. Equal bilateral breath sounds. Okay, now we would move down to the back. And just turn to you. And in the back, we would do the same thing. We would start by inspecting, looking for symmetry, um, any masses or any um, lumps. We don't see anything. We would uh, check for <clears throat> equal expansion of her, of her lungs. Go ahead and take a deep breath. Okay, everything's uh, normal there. Um, we would go ahead and palpate <clears throat> the vertebral angle, knee pain, okay? <clears throat> and same thing with the premises. Can you say 99? 99. 99. 99. Okay. And um, what you do is compare one side to the other, so you move side to side. Okay, go ahead and turn around. Can you lay down for me, please? At this point, um, you would evaluate the breast. Um, you would evaluate the breast by inspecting it first, looking for color, symmetry, um, looking at the um, areola, looking at the color as well, looking for any invert inverted nipples, retracted nipples, the skin texture, um, and to uh, check for any nipple discharge. You would also do palpation of the breast in both men and female, and um, move in a circular motion and uh, check for any nodules or any masses, and um, it would be done for both. So now um, we would do the, the heart, okay? And with the heart, you inspect and you check for your um, PMI, and it would uh, in women, it's a little harder to, to, to see because of the breast, but it's usually on the fifth intercostal maclavicular line. Um, then you would um, check for the precordium, okay, and you would palpate, okay, and that gives you like a position of where it's located. And you would auscultate for your heart sounds, and you would be looking for your S1 and S2, and uh, for any splitting sounds that you might hear, or any S3 or S4 heart sounds, okay? Okay, then you would hear for your aortic valve, your pulmonic, okay. your tricuspid, and your mitral, which is sometimes a little harder. Okay. At this time, you would also check for um, Jugular distension that would indicate maybe some um, uh, fluid overload. Um, you would check for uh, pulses bilaterally, your radial, your pedal pulses, your cap refill, which would be less than three, okay, and yours is your color, your not cyanotic, um, which indicates good cardiovascular. Um, return. Okay. At this time, you go ahead and assess the abdomen. Okay. We start by inspecting the abdomen, divided in four quadrants: right, upper, left. I mean, right, lower, left, upper, and left, lower quadrants. Okay. We go ahead and auscultate the abdomen for bowel sounds. You have very hyperactive bowel sounds, but if we weren't to hear bowel sounds, we have to allow ourselves up to five minutes, okay? 
then we would go ahead and palpate the abdomen. And prior to palpating your abdomen, we go ahead and have the patient empty their bladder. Otherwise, it's very uncomfortable. Did you empty your bladder? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and touch you. You're going to feel my hands, okay? So any pain here? No. Any pain here? No. Here? No. And here? No. Okay. And what we're feeling for is for any masses, any, um, any tenderness, and then we would proceed to um, palpate the liver. And we're looking for it not to be enlarged, okay? Take a deep breath. That makes it usually easier, okay? And then you can do the same trying to palpate the steam. Okay, again. Okay, which is a little bit um, harder to palpate when it's not enlarged. So it's good. Okay, at this point, um, you would move down to the genitalia. Females would have pelvic exams. Um, we would inspect the outside of, of the um, vagina, the labia, um, for any discolorations, any drainage, any lumps. Um, then a speculum exam would be done. Um, same would be done for the cervix, we would uh, visualize the cervix and also check for that, okay? Males would um, have the penis inspected, um, uh, any drainage or discoloration or any lumps or bumps would be noted on them too, okay? So while you're laying down, I'm going to have you flex your legs, flex, straighten them out, okay? Can you open your legs? Okay, so we have at Adduction, can you close up? Adduction. Okay, can you sit up for me? I'm on the side. Okay, and we're going to check for your reflexes, okay? We would do brachial. Okay. Radial. Go ahead and relax your room. Okay. And then patellar. Okay. Then we would do the Achilles. Good. I'm going to do this test, the hearing test. Okay. Um, very important that you tell me. We're going to do the Weber test. And um, that you tell me if you hear it, which side you hear it on. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to do it one more time and we're going to put it on your bone, on your master bone, and you tell me when you don't hear it anymore. Okay? Okay. And now I am going to whisper a word. And I want you to tell me what I said, okay? Apple. Apple. Orange. Orange. Okay. So your hearing is intact. Can you go ahead and stand up for me? Go ahead and uh, bend down. We will check her back. Make sure that her spine is nice and, and symmetrical. Hips are symmetrical and aligned. Okay. Go ahead and stand on one leg. Close your eyes, we're checking for balance, equilibrium, the other one. Good. And can you walk? Put one foot in front of the other. Good. And that concludes my physical assessment. Thank you very much, Victoria, for being my patient. How long was it? 19.